So what is happening to print? Basically what's happening to print is ebooks, e-readers, tablets, there's been an explosion of new uh, tablets that have entered the market. And what has happened is that there's a new platform for people to consume information. And it's become, it's shown that as it's become more popular, paper, public, paper publications have been uh, lowered as the preferred choice of how people consume information. And smartphones have dealt a part in this as now people can access this information uh, via a digital uh, form. If this continues, then it would be a good idea to think about going to digital format so that you can reach those customers that prefer to consume information in this new medium. Some things that you may want to think about is which format do you want to go to? And once you've chosen the ebook format you want to go to, how do you get to it? And finally, how do you streamline your current print publication process with uh, creating digital content? So let's look at some of the formats that are out there currently. One criteria that's very important is DRMs, the Digital Rights Management. It allows us to control our content and also who uses it, and without it, people can copy, paste, and share uh, the documents uh, without us, without them paying for anything. HTML does not have support for DRM. Well, PDF does. It has a very weak DRM. Uh, if you go on the internet, you can find freely reused, free, um, readily available cracks that uh, you can download, and it'll break the DRM for PDF. One strong format is EPUB, and shown to have a good DRM. And also, uh, it has several other criteria that are very important to the future as you want your books to be more engaging, such as images, uh, tables, sound, and, and interactivity. And a lot of these features are coming up with, are coming up in EPUB 3. Some other criteria you want to consider, especially if you're doing scientific documents or educational, is annotations and bookmarkings. Uh, one format I haven't discussed is Kindle. Uh, while it does have a lot of the features that you're looking for, as far as uh, scientific journals are concerned, it's only in one format, and one e-reader currently supports, and that's the Kindle um, for, for right now. And it's lacking some of the interactivity. So you're, you're really narrowing, narrowing down your audience to just Kindle readers. Uh, PDF, as some of you know, has issues with reflowing in that it, depending on what medium you're using, you have to scroll across several times. So it may not be the most comfortable way for consumers to consume your information. Looking from the different criteria, we can see that EPUB is one of the strongest formats to go to. So let's talk a little bit more about, more in depth about EPUB. EPUB supports the DAISY standard, which is a very important standard uh, as it helps people with, uh, it's a standard for people with reading disabilities. So if you're working for, with government entities, it's gonna be very important in the future as uh, the government is slowly getting more into ebook creation and uh, offering ebooks as a way to consume information. One thing about EPUB is that currently the Kindle does not support it natively. Uh, even the new Kindle Fire doesn't support it natively. But that's easily overcome by using software like Calibri to take it to Moby Pocket, which is a format that Kindle is able to read. And I'm sure many of you know that EPUB 3 has, is, is bringing a lot of uh, interactivity. Uh, it's bringing more languages to uh, EPUB than there was before. With EPUB 2, you were only able to have images for different languages. Now you're able to have uh, searchable text. So these are very good advancements. And uh, I think more, 
more exciting features are going to come up, and also more uh, platforms like uh, the different tablets are going to start to support EPUB 3. Currently, if you're trying to go to EPUB, you can use an a online uh, creation process. So some of you may know ebook burn, smash books, script, uh, feed books. And these are very simple tools. What they do is that you're able to upload your documents, whether it be uh, in PDF or HTML or Word doc. And it basically grinds it up and spits it out to different uh, digital formats like EPUB. And it has some advantage in that if you're a self-publisher, it's very cheap, it's very fast. Uh, and they do a lot of the work with the distribution for you. So they bring it out to the Kindle market, they bring it out to um, basically the, the popular ones like I, iStore. Uh, but it does have some issues in that if you're trying to create something a little bit more complex, you, you can't do it. And that it just has doesn't have the formatting capabilities. Uh, you really can't customize the look and feel of those documents. So traditionally what you do is you use a, a content creator like InDesign or Word to create your content, then you style it according to medium. Uh, so for, for this instance, it's EPUB. And it's sort of like a custom, custom built thing where you mix in both your content and your design. So uh, your authors have to worry about more than just creating content. And then you use that to you use a software like Sigil or Calibri to convert it to EPUB. And with this, you're having a problem with too many moving parts. The more things you have, the, the higher chance you have you have some inco incompatibilities, or you may have to rework the content as one feature may be not being able to convert via uh, Sigil or Calibri. And also the problem with this is that you have redundancy in that you have you now have to create content for both uh, print and also your your EPUB creation process. And of course, these tools uh, are not exactly cheap and require some uh, some require a lot of training or uh, and also some investment as well. So. What we came up with is a cloud service uh, called Universal Book, and we bring together content creation, styling, and conversion into one service or one, um, one place that you can do it. And with this, we want to separate content creation and content styling so authors can focus uh, strictly on just creating you uh, great content. And it uses wiki notation, which most authors already know or or it's very easy to learn. So what you can do with this is you create the content once, and then you style it using CSS3 or XSLFO. And by doing this in one system, you reduce the cost as to having two processes uh, to create uh, the same content for print and for your digital format, EPUB. And we also wanted to leverage uh, the power of the cloud and bring tools to you that will help you collaborate, uh, work together so many authors and editors can work together on one document. And we're working on uh, having features to track changes and we plan to have more robust content management uh, to come. So I want you to take away three things from this. And that one is that if you're considering, um, and we're assuming that the trend is going to continue and that more consumers are going to prefer to consume their information digitally, then you want to think about going to digital. Second, that EPUB is one of the best formats you can go to currently. And that finally, you want to use an integrated solution like Universal Book to take your content uh, for both print and PDF. And it helps reduce redundancy and cut down time. Thank you very much. Any questions?